that. Come on, buddy, let's finish it off. Welcome to this Valencia Marathon 2022 race review vlog. I'm Matt, the Welsh runner, 224 marathoner. That feels so good saying that, finally. This video is gonna be all about the Valencia Marathon, how it went, breaking down the race. So let's get stuck in. If you haven't already seen the race vlog, then check that out. I'm gonna dive straight in. I got up at 4 a.m. I had very little sleep, about three hours sleep. And even that, I think, is generous. I felt like I was just lying there awake the whole night. But I tried to bank decent sleep in the nights preceding it. For breakfast, I had a Morton solid bar, a Morton 160 drink, and a rice cake. So it came to about 100 grams of carbs. What I do on race day is I have breakfast in my room because hotel breakfasts just start way too late for me. I think the breakfast was starting at like 6 or 6.30, whereas the race was starting at 8, and I eat four hours before the race. I have no carbs or any food or anything in between that four hours and the race. I don't know if you've heard of reactive hyperglycemia. You can Google that and look it up. But basically for some people, if you eat in that four hour window before the race, your body can go into storage mode, release insulin, try and store the sugar as glycogen when you want your body ready to perform and not to be releasing insulin and storing the glucose. So anyway, I've been practicing in training, not having any fuel in that four hour window and that's what I did on race day as well. The walk to the start was about 10, 15 minutes walk, which I think is perfect. It's enough to sort of like get your head focused, um, walk off some of the nervous energy and just, yeah, get ready for race day. Um, I don't like public transport or anything like that on race day. A 10 minute walk is spot on. When I got to the race village, it was still dark. It started to rain actually, but very briefly spitting rain. Um, bag drop, I went to it, checked it out and it was not busy at all so I thought okay I'll have a little look around and come back. When I came back it was really busy and that's when you start to get a bit like anxious um, queuing for bag drop when you're trying to be warming up but my approach was just control what you can control and uh, not get too stressed about anything else. So I waited, dropped my bag, didn't get much of a warm up, about 90 seconds to two minutes of warm up. Um, but again, I wasn't gonna let, let that get in my head. My legs felt bouncy and fresh, and that's what I wanted. And then I just did a few drills just to loosen up the hips and the glutes and just to get everything primed, ready to race. About 10 minutes before the start, I had a Morton gel and a caffeine tablet, which had 200 milligrams of caffeine in it. That Morton gel is close enough to the start to not be a problem with the release of insulin and all that. So yeah, uh, that's my first gel and then got on the start line and waited for the gun to go. So the start was so busy and I hadn't pushed myself to the front of the pen and maybe I should have because I was held up quite badly. I was running like slower than six minute per mile when I was hoping to PB, which would be faster than 540 a mile. So I just had to be patient. I didn't panic. I just accepted it's a marathon, there's a long way to go and gaps will open up. So for the first two or three minutes, I was running about 550 average um, and then as the gaps opened up I moved forward. Uh, I was having issues with my heart rate monitor so I was picking off gaps moving forward through the field but also my heart rate monitor kept on coming off so I spent about three or four minutes trying to adjust it. In the end I had to take it off, change the length of it and put it back on. I think this was due to the fact that I was carb loaded, I was five pounds heavier than I've been training at um, which shows that I was well carb loaded and hydrated for the day, but my heart rate monitor wasn't sitting very well. I finally got it to sit nicely um, and didn't panic. I just decided, you know, it's a marathon, there's a long way to go. Just don't panic, stay calm, control what you can control. As I moved through the field then, I didn't look at my watch. I was just trying to get into a nice rhythm. Once my heart rate monitor was fixed properly, I think I went a little bit quick as I just let the legs do what they wanted to do. But it came to a point where I saw this big group and I felt like I was running at a nice intensity. And then I noticed the back of Scott Overall's head, um, very recognizable guy. And I knew beforehand, actually I'd been told that Scott Overall was gonna be pacing some of the elite women um, to about 5.30 a mile. And I didn't know what pace I wanted to be running, but I wanted to be running at a feel that felt good. And this felt like a good marathon effort for me. So I thought, well, you know, I'll sit in the back of this pack. It'll help me along. It'll help with my perceived effort. And we'll see how I feel in a few K. 
So for the next 5, 10k, I just sat in this pack and it felt really good. I felt really strong. My three rules going into the day were don't be greedy, be patient and stay positive. So I had this really positive mindset. I was just telling myself I'm strong, I'm calm, I'm in control. And I just sat at the back of this pack just trying to tick off the miles. And I felt good and I didn't get greedy, I didn't push on. I just stuck there and basically tried to fall asleep. I even at one point, I think I said out loud, go to sleep Matt, go to sleep. You just wanted to stay as calm and relaxed as possible for as long as possible. You'll have seen in my previous vlogs that I made my own drink with maltodextrin powder and water with some electrolyte powder on top. And yeah, every 5K I was taking the soft flask out the back of my sore marathon shorts, taking about a quarter of the, the flask, which is about 25 grams of carbs, and then putting it back in the shorts. And yeah, it felt good. Fuel was sitting quite nicely, and I just wanted to keep on taking as much fuel as I could um, so I didn't hit that dreaded wall. There were parts of the race early on where I can't really remember it. I really did zone out and go into this like flow state where I wasn't really thinking anything. It felt completely effortless. I was just clipping along. I felt so in the zone. I felt just like I was flowing along. This group was just pulling me along and I wasn't putting any energy into it. It was just amazing feeling. Um, but then you'd hear someone shout your name or it would be a drink station or something like that and it would sort of refocus you and bring you back into the race which was a good and a bad thing because I was really clipping along nicely and enjoying it. So my strategy in training and in the race and in my practice race, the Dublin Marathon, was every 5k to manually lap my watch to get an accurate 5k split as I went over the mats. Um, so I was doing this and they were coming in pretty much 17 minutes bang on. The pacing by Scott Overall was fantastic. I didn't have to worry about pace. All I had to do was keep him within in eyesight and I knew that I was going to hit the splits. So that was really nice not having to focus on looking at my watch or even the feel. I was just felt good in the group so that's all I had to do was just stick with the group. So we were clipping along about 17 minutes per 5k. Went through half in 1.11.45. So I was like okay this is what 2.23, 2.24 group if I can stick with it. And I felt comfortable so I had confidence that maybe this was going to be my day. I think it was between 20k and 25k when I saw Ben is running and he was walking on the side of the road and this is a horrible thing to see because I've seen how hard he trained and I really wanted him to have a good day and also I like the competitiveness. I was hoping to try and catch him later on in the race so to see him at the side of the road walking was disheartening and also it brings negative thoughts into your own head. As bad as I felt for him it almost made me start to feel a bit worse in my running. I started to get that negativity like popping. It's like, it's a marathon, it's tough. Can you do it? If Ben is struggling, why aren't you struggling? Or maybe you are struggling. But as, as I said, one of my race day rules was be positive. So I tried to replace that with positivity. No, you're strong, you're in control, you've got the group, all is good. But yeah, those doubts do start to creep in and you've got to be strong to try and hold them, hold them at bay. It was about this time where I started telling myself, just stick with Scott overall for another 5K. I started like lying to myself saying, this group was made for you. A bit like Kipchoge in the Sub 2 project when they made like that formation so he could draft. I was pretending this group is here so you can draft. This is your group. And I was like making up this dialogue in my head. Scott overall has promised to pace you. He's promised he's here to pace you. He wasn't there to pace me at all. He was pacing these elite women to national records. But I was telling myself, you stick with Scott overall until 25k. You do not let him go. You do not let him go. You made a promise to him that you will stick with him. So I got through 25k and it's at this stage where things started to feel a bit tougher. Um, and doubts starting to creep in. But I just said, right, now we go to 30k. Now we go to 30k. At about 26, 27k, I took my caffeine tablet. So I had wrapped it in foil, put it in my shorts and took my second dose of caffeine, which was another 200 milligrams. And I can't believe it, like 10 minutes after that, I felt amazing. I felt like I was floating again. It was starting to get tough before that, but the caffeine seemed to hit and I just felt like I was back in the zone, floating along. And I started to think, I'm gonna kick on and really finish this marathon strong. Today is my day. I didn't wanna get cocky. I didn't wanna, I know the marathon can change at any moment but the belief was really there and I thought, I am gonna kick on and have such a strong finish. This is incredible. Stay with Scott over until 30K, then kick on and smash the last 12K. So I was floating along, floating along. 
And then I hit 30k and I didn't feel like kicking on whatsoever. My quads were starting to feel quite heavy and quite sore actually. And by 32k, I could feel that my quads were getting worse and worse and it was quite painful and I was struggling to stay with the group. With gels, I was still trying to take on my fuel. Um, at some stages I felt a bit sick and I felt like I had too much fuel. So I just adapted and stayed flexible. So rather than hit it every 5k, I would just leave it five or 10 minutes after the proposed time to take it and would take some fuel on then. And that was really working. I felt like I was still consistently taking the fuel on, but listening to my body a bit better rather than hitting it exactly on the 5k mark. So I was still taking fuel on and got some fuel on about 30k. And this is where I start to struggle to take any more on. I always the same in the marathon. Towards the end of the race, I do struggle to take it on, but I felt like I'd done a good job in getting a nice amount of fuel in me before the 30k mark. But as I said, my quads were getting sore and it very much was stick with Scott overall. 35k, stick with Scott overall. I was also thinking, how far is overall pacing? Like, I was expecting him maybe to go to 25k or 30k, but in that 30 to 35k split, I was like, wow, he's gonna go to 35k, this is mental. So I was like, stick with Scott overall, do not let him drop you, this is your group, he's doing this for you, this is your group, come on, Matt. And it's just all that positivity of, if you want this to be your day, you have to stay with this group. I very much got to the point where it was this group or nothing. When we went through 35k, Scott overall carried on. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what on earth? He's still running. I was like, well, if he's going to 40k, this is insane. This is your day, Matt. Stick with him. But at this point now, my quads are really hurting. And the group seems to be, are they picking it up or am I slowing down? I'm not sure, but I'm finding it very tough. And it got to a stage now at about 36, 37K where my quads were in agony. Every step was so painful. Um, I think in most races I would have walked at this stage. It was just every single step was so painful. I felt full of energy, full of running, except for my quads. They just felt awful. And then at about 37, maybe just gone 37K, the group just pulled away and it moved away a couple of times, but I just kept them in reach and pulled them back. But this time I just couldn't make it stick. And they, they moved away and I was left to run the rest of the race solo. I was a little bit annoyed by this. I wanted to stay with Scott overall until he dropped out. I wanted to stick with the pacer, but he must've dropped out literally as the group moved away because at about 38K, I saw him at the side of the road and he'd, he'd finished his race. I think he actually jogged it in afterwards but he was at the side of the road, his pacing job was done, and I'd only just been dropped. So I was like, okay, you pretty much stayed with Scott and for his whole pacing, now you've got to finish the job. So it's about 4K left, but every step was agony. And this is where I had to get really mentally strong. Um, the fuel wasn't gonna save me now, caffeine wasn't gonna save me. It had to be mental strength to get me through. And this is where I started bringing in the emotional mantras, which I save for the end. If you use them too early, I Early on, I want to stay calm and relaxed and smooth, but it's, it's okay for me to get a bit emotional and bring in those things that really matter in my life uh, when times get tough. So I don't know if you followed me a couple of years ago, 2021, I ran the Cheshire Marathon and I was going for 72 hours 25. I had an awful day. And the only thing that kept me going was thinking about Perseverance Parrot. Harry had won this award at a nursery for being the kid that had like persevered the most and didn't stop trying and just kept on trying something even though he couldn't do it. And I kept that thought in my head to finish that race. And I told myself that day, I will get a two hours 24, I will keep at it and I will be a perseverance parrot. If Harry can set an example to me, then I can follow back and lead by example too. At the end of Valencia, I was very much telling myself, come on Matt, perseverance parrot, perseverance parrot, do this for Harry. Harry wouldn't give up, Harry wouldn't give up. And yeah, it's when you start thinking about your kids and thinking about your family, it can be emotional, but it can be really a strong driving force. So I kept on telling myself, come on, do not give up, do not give up, do not, do not fold now. Harry, Harry doesn't care, but I was telling myself that Harry really mattered and it really mattered to him. In agony, my quads were really hurting, but I decided to embrace the pain it was horrible. I was telling myself that the pain was a good thing and if I could get more of it, then that would be a good thing. I tried to carry on running as fast as I could and as smooth as I could on these really painful quads. 
and every step was really painful, but I just kept telling myself, pain is good, pain is good, want more of that, that's really good. And my pace didn't fade as much as I thought it was fading. I thought, despite me trying to endure all this pain, that my pace was really, really fading, and I had no idea what time I was on for at this stage. Uh, I wasn't really looking at my watch, I was just trying to hang in there, come on, come on perseverance and then I kept on waiting for the 41k mark I was like oh my god when am I gonna hit it and I never saw it and the next thing I knew it was an 800 meters to go mark I was like it's only 800 to go and at that point I realized I'm gonna finish this I'm gonna run a good time it's nearly over and actually <laughs> there's a bit someone's caught me on camera uh, seeing the 800 meter mark and like surging a little bit because I realized that I'm gonna make it when I hit that blue carpet, it was such a great feeling. You come down the ramp onto the finishing straight and I saw the clock and I looked and I think it was a 400 meter mark and I was like, okay, I've got two minutes or over two minutes to cross that line and there's only 400 meters left. So even if I do six minute per mile, which I'm sure I'm doing, then that takes 90 seconds. So I was like, okay, with a little bit of sprint finish, I'm definitely gonna run 224 something. And realizing that was just such an amazing feeling. I had to double check my watch just to make sure that I wasn't doing the maths wrong. Your head can go a little bit towards the end of a marathon. Sprinted in, put my arms up in the air and just couldn't believe it. I got so emotional after I'd finished, finished and crossed the line. Uh, I've tried to run this time for so many times now and I've just kept at it and I knew I would. I knew I had it in me and I hate making excuses, but I've had some marathons where some things have gone wrong but I've learned from them and I've come back and sometimes it's been warm weather, other times it's been stitches and sometimes something would happen in training a couple of weeks before. Although they were excuses, you can learn from them and come back stronger and that's what I've hopefully done. I felt like I put a solid block in, not an amazing block, but a solid enough block to get a solid enough time and I'm delighted with it. I think there's more to come. I'm, I'm certain that I can go faster. There's so many things I can improve on but I was just so happy to bank that solid marathon time that I knew I had in me and show that perseverance does count for something and consistency counts for something. And if you truly believe in something and you put the work in, it can happen. And that's what happened in Valencia. And it was an emotional day, but it was such a fantastic feeling and it was all worth it. All those miles in the cold, all those miles I didn't want to get out, it was all worth it for that moment. And that brings me back to the UK, into the cold, wintry conditions, the snow and the ice, which leads me on to the winner of the sore running competition. There was over 700 entries and not one person got it spot on, but the winner is Ian Reeves, who was one second out with a prediction of two hours and 24 minutes and 20 seconds. So congratulations, Ian. You'll be getting the long sleeve top from sore and the running tights, which will be perfect for these cold conditions. Thank you to Saw for sponsoring this series. The kit has been invaluable. The quality of the stuff is amazing. I thoroughly recommend you to try it out. Uh, you can save 15% with TWR15 for a limited time now. The, that code will be expiring. So if you do want to try Saw, this is a good time to try some. Thank you everyone for following along. I was going to do a Q&A at the end of this vlog, but it's already waffled on. So I will do a separate Q&A vlog. I've had something like over 100 questions already. I'll have to cut that down, but if you do have questions you think someone might have not asked yet, put it in the comments of this vlog and I will get the Q&A vlog up next week. But thank you for supporting. I'm so happy to run 224. It's just the beginning. Bring on next year. Let's see what I can do. But until then, happy running.